Hey friends, Doug Addison. It is August 17th and um, I thought I would shout out to you a prophetic word and strategy the Lord just gave me. And I've been meaning to talk about this, but now is really the time because this is the time like never before that we need to bring peace. We need to bring peace. We're the ones, but honestly, we're the ones who carry the anointing. We're the ones that carry the ability to shift the spiritual atmosphere. And with everything going on right now, I'm so sorry, first of all, for the victims of violence and racism. It's not who we are. It's not our calling. But listen, remember that the battle is not physical. It's a spiritual battle. We have to keep this in mind. Ephesians six twelve. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of the dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the in the heavenly realms. Now, listen. The Lord's been showing me that this is not what we're seeing right now. What we're seeing all the violence. We're seeing all the stuff happening. Right. It's, this is not just about race. Though it appears to be. This is not just about uh, violence, uh, you know, specifically, maybe the police, uh, you know, brutality or anything that you're seeing or or maybe even terrorism in the sense. Listen to me. It has uh, it, it goes way deeper than that. We're, we're look, currently right now. There's a high level demonic attack trying to divide us. It's a mesmerizing demonic spirit trying to say, hey, look over there. When it's actually operating right here. Hey, look at all the racism. Hey, look at uh, look at all the this type of violence. Hey, look. But guess what? If you drill down, the attack is trying to break our unity. That's where two or three to get, uh, agree together, it will be done. This is uh, it's this principle of the Bible. When we agree together, we can absolutely change the spiritual atmosphere. So. Something, the demonic forces are trying to get us to covertly agree with the enemy and not the Lord. Ephesians 4, 3, make every effort, Paul says, to keep unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Now realize he said this during a time of their terrorism, you know, the New Testament terrorism. They were being uh, martyred. They were being persecuted. They were being pushed down by the government. But read the read the New Testament. You don't see them lashing out against the uh, the government. You don't see them lashing out against other people. Instead, you see them trying to keep the bond of peace, trying to shifting shift that spiritual atmosphere. You know the root really uh, that, that that Satan's unleashing right now is hatred and fear against everyone. Making it look like it's just one group, but it's not. It's against everyone. And the strategy to overcome it is unity in the spirit. But listen, let me just tell you a little bit more biblically. I've been really wanting to bring this word. We can shift the spiritual atmosphere through perfect love. First John 4, 18. Look at it. It's perfect love will cast out fear. If the spirit of fear is hitting, then we need perfect love. We need to step into that perfect love. So we must pray for the president or leaders, no matter how you feel, no matter what's going on. First Timothy 2.1. I wanted to just unpack this for a minute. Yeah, I hope you understand how I do it. I pray for the president every single day. Listen to me. The Lord gave me a prayer assignment for President Trump. I prayed for President Obama. You know, if you can't pray for a president, if you didn't pray for President Obama and, uh, you know, that you're a different political party, and that's the reason you didn't, then, you know, you are you might be a hypocrite and be falling under uh, a closed heaven. The Lord wants us, according to 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, I urge you, first of all, that petitions and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that they may live peaceful lives, quiet lives, and all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved. Listen, this is so important to understand. Paul knew this, that he could bring the bond of peace, bringing the bond of peace, and that you pray for people. And during this time, you realize when he wrote this, this was right around the time of Nero, one of the Caesars that was 
absolutely annihilating and martyring Christians right and left. But yet, Paul encourages everyone. Now, let me unpack this. Listen, here's how you can do it. Some people, you know... You don't have to agree with a leader. This is just for president. This is a leader. Jesus said it this way. Matthew 23, 2 and 3, he said, he said to the crowds and his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. Wow, that's powerful. Jesus recognized that the Pharisees, even though they were coming against him in his day, and he didn't agree with them, he said, you must honor them. You must, because they sit in a seat of authority, Moses' seat. He says, just don't do what they do. You can still pray for someone and just don't do what they do. This is my, my strategy that's going to bring peace. Acts 23, the Apostle Paul took it a little bit further. It says, Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish rulers who were persecuting him. And he says, my brothers, I have faithfully fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Well, he didn't hold it back, right? But you sit there and judge me according to your law, yet you yourself violate this, the law by commanding that I be struck. Verse 4, listen, this is it. Those who were standing near Paul said, how dare you to insult the high priest, God's high priest. Paul uh, replied, brothers, I did not realize he was the high priest, for it is written, do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Wow, that's powerful. Paul, the Apostle Paul, apologized to the high priest when he said something because he understood spiritual authority. Once you understand spiritual authority and that there's power in our mouth, that we have the power of life and death in our tongue, we have the Holy Spirit, then you can realize that when we pray, we can pray. You don't have to agree with a person to pray. So this is how I honor President Trump and take... Half the Lord told me this uh, this year. I got a I got a prayer assignment for him. He said, "I want you to be a man of prayer during a time of war." And I'm like, "We're not even at war." Then I realized, "Wow, we're at war in the streets." And so I split my prayer time, my heavenly time. I go into the courts of heaven every day. I split my time with the president and his staff. And even if I don't agree with things that are going on, you can uh, honor that leader by praying for them and asking God. And so here's some of the prayers. I've posted this actually on a on a blog. Just all you have to do is, is do a Google search on pray for President Trump, Doug Addison, and it'll come up with my prayer strategy. Here's what I pray every day. President Trump, Donald Trump, and his staff and leaders, Lord, I bring them before you every single day. I pray for his staff and leaders that they would develop godly character. I'm going to be very honest. I pray. Without any malice in my heart, I say, God, restrain his tweets. Get, develop godly character. Surround the president. Or you can do this with any leader. Surround, uh, surround the president with godly counsel and wisdom. Only those chosen by you, God, may be placed in leadership positions. And that the Lord will, here's the key, the Lord will speak to all of their spouses and family members with dreams and revelations. And I call it out by name. I ask that, that the president's wife uh, and, and daughter and son will actually be uh, have prophetic dreams. And those in the White House have prophetic dreams and they would go, call upon prophetic counsel because that's what happened in the Bible. That's what happened with King Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh. That's how things shifted in the Bible. So I, I also uh, just... You know, I have a list of the things I pray. This is what I do every single day, whether I agree or not. But it's going to really, really change things. And then I I pray, I yell, I pray this too. Awaken the prophetic intercessors. I speak right now over cybersecurity and hacking attacks to be real, revealed and stopped. Terrorism revealed and stopped. Flesh out those those sleeper cells that they would not act out. Senseless killing revealed 
and stopped. Road rage, road rage revealed and stopped. These are demons. We need to speak over these things in the name of Jesus instead of coming into agreement with them. ISIS revealed and stopped. Any attacks revealed and stopped. God is going to shift things radically. Here's the prophetic word for you. God's going to shift things radically over the next few months. As we move towards Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur in September, we need to come into agreement with heaven, with God, God's plans and not the enemy's plans. So if you're getting upset, then you're coming into agreement with your flesh. Here's what I recommend. This is what the Lord told me today. He said, I want you to go out, release this, this video all over the internet and invite people over the next 30, 40 days as we're approaching, uh, you know, as we're approaching the Rosh Hashanah is to read Colossians 3. If you could do it every day, it would be great. Colossians 3. Now, you don't have to read it all, but just the, the first part. And I'm going to read some of it. Since then, you've been raised with Christ. Set your heart on the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. For you died your old life. It's now hidden in Christ. And uh, when, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Now, verse 5, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. These things are the obvious ones. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Verse 8, though, listen, this is what uh, would really clean the spiritual atmosphere up and bring peace. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander. Filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you've taken off the old self with its practices and you have put on the new self, which is being renewed by the knowledge of the image uh, that uh, in its creator. Verse 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bear with one another and forgive each other if you have any grievances against others, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all else, put on love, which is what binds us together in perfect unity. This, my friends, is the thing that's going to change things. Uh, verse 15, let peace, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, we were called to peace. Once you get a revelation of the body of Christ, you know, that we're all one body, once you get a revelation, well, I don't care what, you know, what the denomination or background or belief is, once you understand not only the, the believers, but the ones who are called as part of this new revival, once you understand this, then you will do everything to keep the bond of peace. I've been given a revelation of it, of the bond of, of that peace is what we really need. It's going to change the spiritual atmosphere. So you and I can show up in places. You don't have to go and protest. You, you can actually do it by prayer, by coming into agreement, by getting into peace, by setting your mind on what's above. Because get ready, friends. We have a revival coming. We have something amazing. I just released a new blog today. And it's why God's shaking things up. So I want you to go to my website and take a look at it because it will help you. There's a turnaround coming for those who've been going through difficult times. Maybe you've experienced the, the fire of testing. It's because you have been in. God is taking us in to the uh, Colossians 3 time of, of cleansing right now. And maybe you've experienced uh, being stuck in the wilderness. Read this blog because it's, it's got some things along with what I'm saying right now, that's going to change the spiritual atmosphere over yourself and over our nation, over your church, over your city. Also, I have a new podcast. Hey, listen, you need to jumpstart your hope. You've got to listen to this podcast. It's a conversation I had. It's an interview with, with an actress in Hollywood, Brenda Epperson. She's a good friend of mine. And she she played Ashley on um, a day, uh, oh shoot, I forgot all of a sudden, Days of Our Lives, yeah, I'm not even into soaps, but she's she played Ashley for eight years, and she's 
been on HBO and, and show test. She's been in movies, but she has an amazing gift to encourage people. And you got to hear her story, how she showed up in Hollywood years ago with a hundred dollars in her pocket and she was waitressing and got a big break and she had never had an acting lesson in her life and landed a big role and she releases that anointing. So go check my podcast out, episode, episode 24, this week's Spirit Connection podcast. Uh, it comes out every week uh, now. If you haven't been um, <clears throat> following them, you can also sign up on, to follow me on uh, iTunes and get it delivered uh, automatically. And also, Discovering the Supernatural is a book I have out. If you want to consider that, understanding more about what I'm talking about, interacting with God's supernatural realm and interacting every single day, it's it really is not that difficult. And so we have a school, online school, Hearing the Voice of God 365. I say hey to all the students, but you can take it right now where we walk you through how to connect this way, how to learn to discern, how to walk in the supernatural every day. Also, we're hiring an in-light connection, my team, and uh, my ministry is is uh, almost all virtual. Not quite. We have an office, but we have a lot of virtual people, so we need a visual designer. And uh, and that you can go to DougAddison.com forward slash jobs. All right, I release this right now. I release unity in the spirit. I release strategies from the Lord. I release over you on earth as it is in heaven, the divine things that you need to cross over into your calling. I pray right now that God will reveal all the things that you need at the right time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great weekend.